Rigging Station, brought to you by Diamond Fishing Products, most reliable monofilament and braided fishing line in the world. We're getting ready to go sword fishing. We're out here making some baits for day dropping. And what we have here is a bullseye snakehead. This is a freshwater species. It's indigenous to Africa and Asia, but they've been showing up in South Florida lakes, canals, ponds pretty aggressively. So here's our snakehead. And when you make a bonita strip, what you do is you, you take the meat off the side, the fillet, and you preserve some of that tail. With the snakehead, we're gonna make a more of a belly strip, and we're gonna preserve both sides all the way down to the tail. So it has a nice snake-like movement. So we're ready to start with our first cut. We're gonna come right under those peck fins. We're gonna slice down. Follow down the backbone and we're gonna trim a lot of this meat later to get a nice strip. So it doesn't matter if your line's not perfectly straight. And like I said, you wanna just follow the line right on the edge of that fin. And we're gonna try and make it come out right where it connects with his tail, the base of his tail. So we just wanna line right down that edge. There you have it. You see the meat coming off right there. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. So now we're gonna follow that same line on the other side of the fish. And we're gonna cut a lot of this off later, so it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want it to come down so where it meets the base of that fin and the tail, you want that to be the most important part. So here, I'm just gonna cut through. Similar to a strip bait, we're not gonna keep a lot of this meat on the fillet here. We're gonna keep some, but we're gonna thin it out a little bit. And once we get it split open nice and nice and even, nice and symmetrical, then we're gonna stitch it back up. Make it durable again. Now this is part of the reason why some people think that these snakeheads are around South Florida. Look at this meat. That is some nice looking meat. And I've eaten it before, it's decent. So now. We've got this backbone section kind of peeled out. We're just gonna keep working our way down until we get into that kind of stomach cavity and the lining. It makes a big difference to have the right tools. See, I just hit a bone right there. Scissors wouldn't go any longer. Those snips go right through it. So there, see that's his spinal cord section, backbone, and where stomach cavity was, all gone. So now we have this nice strip from his belly. So now I'm gonna work on trimming this bait up. As you can see, it's pretty big as is. I mean, not to say you couldn't fish it like this. Some people do fish big fat baits like this, but I like something a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna trim this up and I'm gonna start with these scissors. I'm gonna get a nice edge along the side of the snake head. And these things have some tough scales, some thick skin. You know, they're one of the most aggressive freshwater species, probably the most aggressive in Florida. Now you can see their lateral line. You guys see that on TV world? The little line goes all the way down the fish. And that's really a big sensory organ for them. And that helps detect predation and lets them know when the fish are around. The point I'm getting to is they have one on each side. And I'm paralleling that line because these fish are symmetrical. And I'm going to use that as kind of a guideline when I'm slicing it down and trimming it up. So you see my cut is going parallel. Keep following that all the way up. And I'll have one side done. Now I'm going to trim up the other side just like that. And we're going to have a nice finished product here. Got my lateral line there again. And I'm going to follow it. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Still got a little more to take off, but we are close. Okay, pretty happy with that right there. Now I'm cutting this headpiece to get it to tug up, snug up tight. A lot of preparation here, but it pays off. It's well worth the effort. Now what we're, with the last step before we can start stitching up again is kind of thin that out a little bit. That's got some thick meat on it, so. 
we're just gonna fillet a little bit of this out. And trim up that edge, because that edge is where you're gonna be poking your needle through, so got a big fat piece of skin or meat hanging there, it's not gonna work too well. All right, so that'll work. So we have our belly strip cleaned out. Got my 11-0 hook crimped onto my 300 pound mono, about four or five feet. Got my rigging floss and I've got my closed eye needle and I'm about ready to start. So first now we're just gonna size up this bait and see where the hook is gonna rest. That's where I'm gonna make a little indention where my hook's gonna go. So we got our bait now. I got my hook, it's 11 -0. it's on 300 pound mono, about five feet. Got my rigging floss and my bait needle. And I'm gonna just kinda measure out where my hook's gonna rest. I want the, the hook to come out on the shank right where the, the bend starts to come up. So I'm gonna make a little pierce right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the excess thin material from in front of that point. Okay, so now I'm gonna come from the inside, find where my, I made that little mark so my hook sits perfectly. Make sure it's coming out right where I want it. Gotta be perfectly centered here, this is very important. There we go. Tough skin these things got. So this is pretty much what your, your rig is gonna look like when it's completed. So I'm gonna put a hole in the top of my bait where my tag end is gonna insert through. You can see here, I'm actually gonna put the main line through this one. You just wanna make sure it lines up perfectly. So now I'm gonna slide a crimp down the top. I'm gonna tighten this bait up. I'm just gonna trim that tag in. And we almost have a snakehead. Got my, my rigging floss here, closed eye rigging needle. The reason I use a closed eye needle is because when I'm stitching the bait and I'm coming back from the bottom, I don't want that open eye to grab the thread that I've already placed in the bait. That'll cause the bait to bind, won't sit right. So I made an overhand knot so it keeps that locked nice and tight. I'm gonna start at the head. And I'm just gonna make one little incision here, pass this needle through. I'm gonna make an overhand knot with this, simple overhand knot. Now before I do this, gotta make sure my bait is gonna be perfect when it's done. Cause this is important. If it doesn't sew up nice and even and symmetrical, then you just wasted all your time. Your bait's gonna spin, it's gonna tangle, you're pretty much beat. So, overhand knot, pull that needle through, and then just cinch it tight. So what that did is it just closed up the top of the bait. And I'm gonna leave this tag in because once I stitch down and I come back up, I'm gonna tighten it and I'm gonna make another knot to close the top. And all we're gonna do is insert this needle about every half inch, every inch. And I'm gonna work my way all the way down the bait. Well, the snakehead meat is tough. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the needle against this cutting block and I'm using it to wedge it through because I can't push it through, it's so stiff. That means that if a swordfish comes up and gives it a good smack, it'll probably be around for him to come back the second time if he doesn't get that hook in him. You could also use a tool to kind of drive your hole in there. Just be careful because when you're putting this much force into it, you could easily stick yourself with the needle, stick yourself with that razor sharp 11-0 hook that you do not want in your skin. This meat's so tough you might need to use a pair of pliers because your hands are gonna be all slimy from working with these things. Just gonna work your way down the bait. Use something to Get some leverage of that needle going in there. Make sure you don't stick your finger. Who knows what kind of bacteria is on here. All right, so I made it down to the tail section. Now, before I start going back up, I'm gonna make one more pass through the same hole I just went through. 
and that's going to lock in those stitches on the top of the bait. Let's get that nice and snug. And now it should be easier since you have these holes already kind of, I guess you could say, pre-drilled. We're stitching up our bullseye snake head. What I'm going to do is I got the line wrapped from around the bait. It's going around the leader. And as you see that, it just really streamlined that. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to make a couple wraps around that. One last one will lock that in. We have a snakehead belly ready for a daytime swordfish. That red color looks pretty nice to me. Red orange, a little October Halloween special. There we have it. Bullseye snakehead, rigged for daytime sword fishing. We are gonna see if we can make it happen. Rigging Station, brought to you by Diamond Fishing Products, most reliable monofilament and braided fishing line in the world.